Hello, I am Lasma, a physicist from SAF Technic. Today I will talk about our newest sensor, Aronet Radiation Sensor, and what it measures. So, Aronet Radiation Sensor, as the name suggests, measures radiation. To be more specific, it measures ionizing radiation. It's capable of detecting beta particles, gamma radiation, and X-rays. I will go into more detail about these later. So, ionizing radiation, what is it? It is energy given off by radioactive materials. It is powerful enough to remove tightly bound electrons from atoms, creating ions, hence the name ionizing. It can also be powerful enough to damage DNA structure. When discussing how radiation affects health, it is crucial to understand that not all radiation is harmful. For example, visible light is a part of electromagnetic spectrum, hence it is radiation as well. The potential harm from radiation depends not only on its type, but also on its intensity and exposure duration. For instance, microwaves are not part of ionizing radiation. However, we know that by using a microwave oven we can boil water, and there is water in our tissue as well. So do not put anything alive in a microwave oven. Returning to ionizing radiation. The most common types include alpha particles, beta particles, gamma radiation, and X-rays. All the particles are emitted from the nucleus of radioactive materials. They have a relatively short lifetime and they can be effectively shielded by various materials, such as a piece of paper. Since paper is one of the materials covering our sensor's element, Arnett radiation sensor does not measure alpha particles. Given that the radiant decay chain initially consists of alpha radiation, this sensor is not suitable for measuring radiant concentration. Regarding beta particles, there's a more specific classification, but for our purposes we can think of beta particles as high-speed electrons. Beta particles can be effectively shielded by a variety of materials, including common plastics. The next type of ionizing radiation I mentioned is gamma radiation, which is highly penetrating. And lastly, X-rays are also a form of ionizing radiation. They are generated outside of the nucleus, so they are not drawn in this diagram. Now let's focus on the sensor itself. It comes in the packaging accompanied by an info page on where to access Iron at Home app and the radiation sensor quick start guide that provides information on setting up and configuring your device. The link is also available in the caption of this video. The sensor is small and portable. The sensor operates using pin diode. It has an e-ink display. Due to these two things, this sensor has an exceptional battery life. It can operate for up to four years without needing a battery change, making it convenient as an environmental dosimeter. More information about this can be found in the sensor's datasheet, the link to which is provided in the caption of this video. The sensor connects to Aronet Home app via Bluetooth, allowing access to data history for up to 90 days. The sensor is calibrated using cesium-137 radiation source, which primarily emits gamma radiation. However, it also detects beta radiation and X-rays. For example, when your luggage is checked with an X-ray machine at the airport, the sensor will detect it. If you wish to avoid this, you can remove the batteries while you are undergoing airport control. The total dose measurements won't be lost, they will just be paused until you reinsert the batteries. Now let's look at the sensor screen and what it measures. The large numbers represent the dose rate of radiation, which indicates the current radiation exposure. To use an analogy, the dose rate is like a car's speedometer, telling us how quickly we are accumulating radiation at any given moment. The smaller numbers at the top represent the total dose. The first line is for integration time, which indicates how long the measurement has been ongoing. The second line shows the total dose, the cumulative amount of radiation encountered over this specific period. There is extensive information available regarding the total dose, including health guidelines on the levels that should not be exceeded annually. For example, an occupational limit of 100 millisieverts per year must not be exceeded for more than five consecutive years, according to German government regulations. The harmful amount of radiation exposure to human health depends on the type of radiation, its energy, the duration of exposure, and the individual sensitivity to radiation. 
Many health effects related to radiation are described by probability. Next on the screen, there is also information about the units of measurement. There are several units describing radiation. Different types of radiation might produce different biological effects. This is all taken into account when discussing radiation effect, expressing the exposure as an effective dose in units called Z-words. A single Z-word represents a substantial amount. Therefore, typical doses are measured in millisieverts or even microsieverts. Additionally, a color-coded safety level scale is displayed on the front panel. It is based on two factors, extrapolated yearly amount of absorbed radiation with the current dose rate and the highest background levels in normal environments around the world. Besides color coding, the sensor also notifies you when the dose rate or total dose reaches unhealthy levels by inverting parts of the screen. In the default setting, thresholds are set according to scientific guidelines, but they can be customized for your personal use in RNET Home app. When you first turn on your RNET radiation sensor, you will notice that the dose rate numbers are outlined. This indicates that you should wait for the first measurement to appear. When the dose rate numbers change from outline to filled, you can begin your measurement journey. Now let's look at the backside of the sensor. There is a sticker. Behind this sticker, there's a hole in the plastic casing. This ensures that beta particles can be detected. Behind the batteries, there are four dip switches. You can change their position using the included metal pin. Even if the batteries are left in, the first switch allows for changing units from Zverts to REMs. The second one enables or disables the buzzer. Please note that there are two types of buzzer functionality. With this deep switch, we can activate or deactivate the audio signal that notifies us about pulses counted in real time. So, if you enable this functionality, each time your sensor beeps, a radioactive particle or radiation quantum has been registered. You can also enable an auditory signal to notify you when the safety threshold has been exceeded. This sound emits a slightly longer beep. This functionality can be enabled or disabled from the Airnet Home app, and the warning thresholds can also be edited there. Returning to the dip switches. The last one that might interest us is the third switch, which enables the Bluetooth signal. That's all from me today. Let us know if you have any additional questions in the comments section.